And we are back for another Starfinder. Um, tonight, Tales from the Spike, Episode 2. We've got players standing by. Um, we are live, so no telling what is going to happen. But let's go find out, shall we? Yep, there we go. Let me turn them on so I can hear them. Howdy, folks. Howdy, hi. Hey. Hola. Now, I saw we had Joe. He was in the channel, and then he he disappeared. Did he say anything? I didn't even know I was here. I, I noticed him here. I saw him come in for a moment, and then he, he, he zipped. All right. Well, we will not wait for him. Let's have we'll a little bit of sound effect. Up. A typical day in the spike now let's start off with that question I always ask and which everybody always cringes on do you remember what you did last time uh, we, left off, we defeated the big we defeated the big with we defeated the evil tour bus yeah the bus not yes the tour bus the bus and all we had a couple of living things left but most everything we killed I think um you either killed or ran off the Skittermander whelps. I knocked um, one out. So there is one unconscious. There was also one unconscious goblin from yeah. before the bus knot emerged. And, um, you know, there's a crowd kind of stopped in the street kind of gathering. You've got this wrecked bus knot. You've got dead goblins lying around. Um, what are you doing? Um... Well, so much for making sure no one gets in that securing the room. I thought we were going to go in and look for once we got everything once we got everything locked down here, like oh. that baby thing, like tied up or put in a box or something. Because when it wakes up, it's probably gonna be hungry again. Well, yeah, it's about. I would say it's about the size of a of a you know a small cat. What, what are you guys gonna do with? It? And you have you have a, a live goblin that you knocked out too. What are you gonna do with him? Keep him tied up, and I'm gonna see. They where they um we saw those little things get spit out of a box somewhere on the bus knot. Yeah, if you um, will look, you'll see that. Um, make me an engineering check. You're checking over this bus knot. You guys are checking out. Okay. Engineering. And that's for anybody that has the skill, whether you have ranks in it or not. You can have a roll. <laughs> Matt, you've entered the Matrix again. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> there you are. He kind of goes out and then comes back. It's it's actually kind of cool. <laughs> I know, I've been watching myself on, on the Twitch stream. Oh. All I'll right. be back. Um, Gaigo, um, you're looking and it looks like there was a storage compartment on the bottom that you can tell by the claws, claw marks on the inside of it that maybe the goblin had stuffed them all in here and then rigged up a remote switch to be able to pop it open as a diversion. Well, they had to have some kind of storage space for the babies if the, if the, if the parents were around anywhere. So is there any kind of make, like... make me a life sciences role. What do you know about the ecology of skittermanders? Let's see. Life sciences. What is life sciences? I see physical sciences. Oh, there it is. I'm just being an idiot. All right. Apparently a lot. <laughs> All right. Now, let me look up Skittermander. Hold on here. Let's see. No, not that. 
I must have gotten bored with a data file one day. All right. Near ubiquitous inhabitants of the planet Vest 3, Skittermanders led a simple, mostly agrarian lifestyle before the Vescarium annexed their planet. They have a unique outlook, individualistic without being anarchic, and somehow unable or perhaps unwilling to grasp the concept of permanent governance. They understand and enjoy teamwork and naturally follow a qualified leader to undertake large projects such as the building of domiciles, but once that task has been completed, the leader doesn't continue to hold sway over the others. Coupled with their unusual life cycle, it would seem as if skittermanders would be very difficult to rule, but such is not the case. They have this overwhelming desire to help people. And even though the Vesk tried to dominate them, all they did was cheerfully and um, cheerfully pitch in and help. Um, let's see. They begin life in something akin to a larval stage. A whelp looks like a miniature version of the adult, but with more prominent ears and a tiny secondary mouth on its abdomen. Once born, they are left to fend for themselves. They are truly omnivorous, capable of digesting fruits, leaves, raw meat, and seeds. Additionally, its secondary mouth allows it to attach itself to large prey and feed as, at its leisure. Thanks to a numbing mucus secreted by its mouth, less intelligent animals rarely even notice the whelp's samplings. A swarm of them has been known to bring down a trundling bovine mondux, whatever that is, in a matter <laughs> of minutes. After about six years, they mature into adult and begin to walk upright, lose their secondary mouths, and, um, you know, become sociable. So, at this stage, adult skittermanders don't even care about them. They, they think of them as wild animals the way you would. Okay, so I'll stuff it back in the cargo compartment and lock it up for now. All right. Let the, let the, let animal control deal with it. Yeah. Uh, all right. But that's what you know about it. But it it is alive. You have a live one, and in a few years it'll grow up to be an intelligent critter. But right now it's a a feral, omnivorous little eating machine. Yeah, like I said I'm going to lock that sucker up. All right. While you guys are looking over this wreck bus knot, I'll take perception rolls. Ooh, there's my stinker for the day. Okay. You guys are all startled when you hear a gruff voice behind you say, just what the hell's going on here? And you turn around. And let's see, what is this guy's name? Let me look it up. You see. Um, let's see, where do you guys have listed the people you know? Uh, it should be on your notes, correct? Yep. Uh -huh. All right. Let me see. Oh, um, Gago, you immediately recognize this voice. Oh, um, geez, it's him. Um, let's see. <laughs> okay. You don't. And let's see, there's Rosk. Okay. Yep. Guy go you immediately um recognize the gruff voice of Constable Grimm and you guys turn around and there is a seven foot tall, three and a half foot wide, three hundred and fifty pound orc in a steward's uniform, essentially a cop. And he's got his his arms crossed and his bicep is bigger around than your head, Gygo. And I'm he's, he's kind of looking down at you. I should have known I'd find a little creep like you. 
Don't you have some gang's boots to lick right now? Give me an intimidation check. Oh, this is going to go bad. <laughs> you get a minus one. <laughs> eh, not bad. Oh, not bad. Well, you see, you get a bonus because there's a big Vesk standing behind you with a bigger gun. Oh, do I need to do a roll? <laughs> nope, you don't need to do anything. He got an assist just from you being there. And he'll look at you, and he was going to say something, and then he'll look at your buddy, and then he'll look at your robot, and then he'll look at that shady-looking guy over there, and then a couple of other guys that are also present. And um, he'll say, I suppose you're responsible for this. Does this belong to you? Let's not attack this. Not our deal. Goblin, Goblin runs it. One live one over there. We were just sent to secure. We we're just paid to secure the hangar. He'll look around and he'll, um, you know, go take a look at the bus knot and he'll climb up in it and he'll fish around and dead goblin. Captain. He'll, um, he'll pull up, um, what looks like, um, basically whatever the 223rd century version of a CD is probably a little plastic disc with an image of the band on it. And he's like, Ooh, first album autographed. That ought to be worth something. And he sticks it in his pocket and he says, tell you what, I wasn't here. I don't want to have to fill out paperwork. So when I come back around, you don't be here either. Do I, oh, just my, do, I make, do I make myself clear? Do I just stick yep. it on Fife? <laughs> Fife. And he'll turn and um, he'll walk away. I will take um, a culture check from anybody that would like to make it. Oh, why not? Hmm. Did I not roll? I did not see the roll. Okay. Okay. Um, you know that that basically the equivalent of an autographed first album that he just stole out of there is probably worth quite a bit of money. Probably a thousand or more credits on the on the market. And you just saw basically a cop lift it and um, then walk expecting... away, turn his back on what you're doing here. I kind of expected it. It's not a surprise for me. No surprise I, to me. I mean, I know him. So. You know, all coppers are uh, bad. He doesn't like you. Guy of course, guy. I'm an actual cop. Sure. Um, let's see. Yes, you, you did choose him as hostile. And had you been alone, he would have probably arrested you and blamed you for all of this. But... He realizes that you know, this might have been a fight, and really, you know, he figured instead of fighting, he'd find something to make himself a little bit of money and um, move along his way. All right, what do you guys want to do now? Well, um, we gotta we gotta search the we gotta search the hangar at least, because God knows what's in there. Okay, I, probably, um, I should probably call my boss. I have that thing to check up on. We should call, we should call fly by night. Let him know that, hey, that hangar was already infiltrated and there were goblins everywhere. You, you're going to call him up? And yeah. You'll see his um, helmet head, kind of bluish metal face, pop up. Fly by here. Hey. Hey. Fl uh, hey. I don't know what happened to the previous team, but the place was infested with goblins and there is a bus knot. Hey, I come again? The goblins oh, modified a bus and were trying to attack the city with it. Whatever was that hangar was being controlled by goblins. Hmm. Interesting. I, I don't know who hired you, well, but we got a mess in here. The hangar's well, open and trashed. Do your best. Um, investigate the inside of the hangar. Take pictures. Um, and um, get back to me, okay? Okay, thanks. Bye. And he hangs up on you. Okay, as I said, let's go. All right. The bus knot is still here. You guys can see um, 
Well, it looks like um, scavengers are starting to drift into the area, and they're starting to look over the bus knot and, um, you know, starting to... I'm going to move my bot out to, to, to secure it. You're going to... Okay. You... Stand clear. Stand clear. All Active right. investigation. Stand clear. All right. So if you send the bot out there, they will back off. Otherwise, um, they're going to strip this thing down because it is all the way outside the hangar, and it cannot move from where it's at without major repairs in yeah, fact so it wasn't gonna... even meant to walk on the legs that the goblin installed on it i kind of figured it was a typical hover bus first but... probably to it's probably disable the hover but hover drive to stick to man the legs all right let me do this i will let me resize it let me share with you an image Share that with you. Uh, and move that into place, and then let's switch over so everybody else can see what we see. All right, let me add you to this map. You guys did get that, correct? Is yes, the map is up? loaded. Okay, cool. Cool, yep, yep. cool, cool. All right, and? You said the robot was staying outside the guard? Yeah. Because right now, we have two NPCs, two players that are not here yet, and they could stay outside and guard. Okay, so guard so it while bring robot in. Okay. okay. Then we will, um, for now, remove Herbie and Mike. Let's see. And see, so you did have one goblin. Are you going to drag him in here as well? As well, he's probably got. We probably got him zip tied. Or are you going to leave him out there? We'll say that the others are guarding him right now. Um, all right. This is what you see. Um, this is um, not a hangar bay, but it is actually a cargo pod, similar to you know the way shipping containers on ships are stacked together this is a typical cargo container that can be attached to um the door such as it is so this whole module could be removed from a cargo ship and installed here or removed and another one put here um that's why it's a storage bay because it accepts a storage container but you can see what looks like in the middle of it is hold on what looks like um a makeshift um rack lift mechanism that the bus might have been sitting on it um and you guys um tokens should not be locked you can move around in here as you wish um okay um they said it looks like that's where the goblin repaired his stuff. Um, Wonder what? Do I know anything about what happened to that band? Um, no. That, are they, like the they, they, are, they are not a well-known band. Herbie knew about them. Is there anything in these uh, sort of here? Um, I, I will get to that. Let's start with um, Prad. You go over um, 
it looks like um, this area here mm -hmm. um, make there's a bunch of equipment in here it's not particularly familiar to you make me an engineering check let's see if you recognize what it is It looks Shoot. like um, recording equipment. There's a soundboard and, you know, a couple of um, server computers to store, um, you know, music and stuff. It looks like a pr this is a production booth. Yeah, so it looks like it could be a place where videos are recorded or maybe media of some sort. Maybe media of some sort. Um if the band were recording in here, this would certainly be a great sound booth. Hmm. And in fact, that's what it looks like is a sound booth. There is a window that looks out onto the um, rest of the hangar module. So this is a little room that I'm in then? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Rosk, you walked over to that one first. As you come close to it, you can hear... Uh, make me a perception roll. Let's see what you can hear. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. You hear some sort of high-pitched animal screeching sound and the sound of claws scraping against metal. Um, that looks like a more typical storage container. It's got the typical swing open double doors right there in front of where you're at, where you could open it. And you can hear something clawing at the other side of that door. Sounds like a wild animal. Hey, guys, there's something clawing at this door. Bang you want on me to open it? it? Can speak. Bang on the door and ask if it can speak. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, bang on, uh, on the door. Hello? Can you speak? All right. You bang on the door and the scratching stops. Hold on one moment. Somebody is at my door. Hey. Who's that knocking on my door? Who's that knocking on my door? Who's that knocking on my door? Said the fair young maiden. Was he, he talking about, about the, the guy, in, 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 the monster inside? The, the no, he's on his actual door. Oh, actual door. Okay. I heard tapping behind him in real life. Ah. Uh, actually, my front door is right there in front of me. Just off to my left. Uh, Matt, I am getting double audio on you again, but if you oh, can't, if you can't, pick, all right, yeah. Um. If you can't figure it out, don't worry about it. It's it's fine. Um. Anyways, that was the tamale lady, and if you're from Arizona, and um. I've ever had to deal with the tamale lady, you know that even if you don't want to buy tamales, you answer the door so that the tamale lady will come back again next time. Yes. Absolutely. You're lucky you have a tamale lady in your neighborhood. She get arrested in mine. This one's been here. I've lived in this particular place for 13 years, and she's been coming here the whole time. We have a group of women that come by at lunchtime at the place I work with a trunk full of Mexican food, so... Mm -hmm. least. And it's better than what you can get at a restaurant. Probably. Oh, absolutely, hands down. It's all home cooking. That's why it's got, <laughs> yeah. it's got love in it. Anyways, well, um, <laughs> as I was saying before, the door interrupted me. <laughs> you hear a high squeaky voice say, "Hey, hey, somebody out there! Let us out! Let us out! We're hungry!" <laughs> and then. Something. Hey! Let us out! Well, I guess it. Well, something tells me we found the band. We found the band. <laughs> Are you the band? What? Well, let him out. I'll let him out. All right. You pop open the door, and out spill three skittermanders. One of them has long straight flowing blonde hair he looks like kind of like a blonde cousin it with extra arms 
There's a red one who has his hair is all, you know, curly and matted and unkempt, and he looks kind of half feral. And then there's a taller, skinnier one with blue fur that has little red zigzags running through it. And her fur, you think it's a she, is cropped short except for a blue mohawk. And she stands up and says, Oh, <laughs> oh thanks. Uh, hey, where's our tour bus? Uh, it's outside with legs attached to and it. And then she'll, uh, let me, um, let me add them. She's like, uh, I don't know who you guys are, but, but you saved our life. She's like, and she'll say, let me add them. I'm recording everything while we're here. All right. Let me add them. As we'll put that data link and all my other extra hardware, my eyeballs to use. The blue one will say, "I'm Zer. These are my bandmates, Royo and Rojo. We're Uba Duba." And she smiles big, as if. She expects you to have heard of her, but she's not a band that you know. And I'll, I smile I'll just, just, just because. And um, she will immediately, you know, go over and start looking at the tour bus and like, no, no, my, my tour bus, oh no! And meanwhile, Royo, well, the, <laughs> the the Royo, the blonde one, will go over and say, oh no. Oh no! Our instruments are gone! All of our instruments are gone! What are we gonna do? And, you know, the one with the matted red fur runs over there and looks around, and he's got a wide eyed look on his face, and he goes, And the one with the yellow fur says, What's that, Rojo? Oh, dear. The master tapes are gone, too. Not the master tapes. Oh, no. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they all kind of come back over because... Well, who locked you in there? It was I'm that... assuming goblins? No, it wasn't goblins. It was our dirty, rotten manager, Thinky Sly. In this cartoon. That's what the robot says to itself. What? Guy goes just sighs. So oh, I've seen this cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what he sighs and says. That's literally what it sighs and says to itself. And if it weren't for those damn robots, we would have gone away with it. And they're like, <laughs> you know, uh, our master tape and our insurance. You know, we we came here to get our big break. He, he was going to set us up on our big break, and he just set us up. Oh, man. You, you got to help us. You got to help us get our instruments back. You got to. You got to. What do you say? And they'll all come over, and they'll kind of gather around Rosk, who is the one that let him out. And they're kind of all jumping up and down, and they got all their hands clasped together, pleading, <sighs> please, please. Can you help us? You gotta help us get our master tapes and our instruments back. You gotta, oh, and and maybe help us fix our bus. And the the matted fur red the matted fur red one will say, <laughs> and you know, Zer will look at him and say, "You think you can fix it? Okay. I don't think we can afford to, though." And the the one with the matted hair go. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And she'll turn to you and say, "We gotta get the master tapes back. You know, we don't have anything to give you, but we can sure make it up to you. Can you help us out? Can you? Can you? Let me confer with my let me confer with my associates. But I think something can be arranged. 
We were just paid to see why a security detail for the hangar disappeared. <laughs> All right. Um, Rosk, you kind of, they kind of cornered you over there. And um, make me another perception roll while you're over there. Meanwhile, um, Brad, what are you doing? You're over there in the control booth. Have I noticed these guys chatting with these? Otherwise, I'm poking around at the... Well, you can hear them because the one, the little blue one, she's loud. Okay, so then I will come out and join them. Okay, and um, Geico, you're over there looking at the at the basically the lift rack. Um, definitely goblin technology. You know, <laughs> there are you, goblin tools everywhere. Yeah, there are goblin tools everywhere. They they wouldn't be worth anything at a pawn shop, and you're likely to break your knuckles to to break the grip on a bolt. Also, shop at Harbor Freight. Yes, they shop at Harbor Freight. They, they buy the Wrath of Taiwan. But, yeah, it, it is... Um, you could probably cobble together, um, you know, an engineering um, toolkit from this, but it wouldn't be good for more than maybe a half a dozen uses before, you know, all the tools became useless. I think they'll it's, need it to fix their bus. It's goblin tech at the best. Um Meanwhile, um, Rosk, you smell a, a smell when you get over near that other container. You don't, um, you can't quite place it, but it's an animal smell. Ah. Uh, oh, no. Hey, guys, it smells like... Oh, no, no. It's, it's, it could be a dead animal. Alive. Well, um, Uba Duba members, do you know what's in that other container? No. That, that it wasn't here when we before. This is, you know, we we own this container. This is our, you know, kind of our travel accommodations. That and our tour bus. And she looks real sad again when she talks about the tour bus. Ross, could you kick the container and see if it growls at you? Sure, why not? I was just thinking of just opening it up. So, so I can, uh, I'll kick the door, uh, kick it. Hmm? There is a many-toothed thing on the other side of that door. It's going to eat your face. Perhaps you should bang on it and try and ascertain what's behind door number one. Door number one. Which one's door number one? It doesn't I'm matter. I'm cornered here. Kick the door in front of you, man. Okay. So I kick the door. So what is it? Uh, you, you, all you have to do is kick the door, and um, you hear a snarl, and um, you hear something much bigger than a skittermander dragging its claws down the back of that door. Hmm, something, something bigger. bigger. You want to open it now? Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm already bloody as it is. Uh, uh, if, if if Smiley Boy is going to open it, I'm going to move back. <laughs> I'm my robot. I'll tell, I'll, 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 I'll tell, I'll tell the, the band to back, back up, up, so I don't want to hurt them. Or I'll move my robot in to support you. Yeah, that'd be great. Here, I'll move that down, down a little I'll bit. I'll take a bead on the with my rifle. I'll have my pistol out. Are they gonna? Uh, is the band members going to move out? Um, I think Rob's preparing an encounter. Oh, no. It's already <laughs> prepared. There you go. I was just work. seeing if I could do anything on my end. They're going to go back into the container they were in. And close the door. <laughs> and close the door. <laughs> they're they're, they're, they don't know what's exactly. in there. And they're, they're not going to be any good in a fight. All right. Um, you pop that door open. I'm going to... Make sure I'm, I have a weapon that's loaded, just in case. I wanted to do the same thing I did last time. Uh, what's it? Use? All right. Um, How do I reload it? I want the robot it? to open the door so you can blast it if it charges? No, I want to make sure I load my gun first before I, I did that. I mean, I, 
it felt I felt kind of stupid with it the last time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do you I just unpack these? these? Hmm, hold on, you're you're echoing again, and it's. I'm uh, sorry. All right. No, I don't. I'm trying to figure what I can do to stop it. Well, me, well, am I, am going, I going through, through Discord, Discord or? or? You should be going through Discord, not through the uh, the web app. Uh, is this better? That's better. Yeah, I, I had it on the other one. My bad. All right, no worries then. Cool. All right, they're going to go in there and lock. You pop that door open, and of course, there is, well, a yeah. there is something back there. Let me see if I got a picture of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just want to make sure I reload my weapon first. <laughs> there. Another thing with a tentacle in its belly. Yeah. Eek. It looks like bad ears. Or. I think I have a miniature of that one. Sprite Amanda, huh? Hmm. And Gaigo, because you have gotten a 23 on your skittermander um life science role you would know that um these are a primitive evolutionary offshoot of said things hmm. well um cave mander yeah <laughs> something right like that and i'll take initiative rolls I really wish I knew where Joe was, because you guys are going to be in for a world of hurt. Tell huh. you what I'm going to do. Is Wait, I'll before, make me don't, don't, don't roll your initiative yet. Hold on. I'm going to... Give you guys an overnight rest. And, because yeah. I'm a benevolent game master... Gonna give you all your hit points back too. Yay, thank you. Because you're low level. Otherwise. Alright, now roll initiatives. Okay. Oh! Oh, this is gonna be bad. Son of a. I just yeah. saw it turn 19. What? what? Okay. Yeah. The luck of the bounce. Fantasy grounds dice are cursed. I got my one out of the way. Yeah, there's more to come. Just I've been rolling pretty good so far tonight. I've rolled mediocre all night. Hasn't been particularly grand. Hasn't been particularly bad. Uh, I just, just got a message mediocre. from Joe. He had an internet outage. We do have storms in this part of the valley, and so he's trying to get back to us as quick as possible. That's why he uncharacteristically disappeared. So, um, if things go grim, I will bring in the other characters. Hey. Oh, joy. We'll see how it goes. Alright. This thing no, goes first. Of course it does. <laughs> And let's see. Okay. It is animal cunning, but let's see. Ooh. Okay. I did say that it wasn't very bright in here. It, it is dim, well, no, I'll say it's standard light, but it is dim light in there. You pop the door open, and this thing hisses and lashes out. And hits. And oh, no. Flask. All crits. Look, look at that plus on that dice roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna eat you, Matt. Just thought I'd share that with you. Look at that. Plus, plus seven damage. And that thing in its stomach 
Don't um, let it hit you, because it will attach it to you. It, it did. Oh. It, it's already done. Um, I don't think it attaches. I'm looking at that. It's eating you. How pleasant. <sighs> uh, let's see. <sighs> it's a Roski snack. Oh, we'll just see how long uh, that lasts. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. What's, what's your armor class there, Rosk? Armor class is Kinetic. Kinetic. No, you're, that's your versus combat. Your kinetic is yeah, 26 k Yeah. Oh, he, he rolled a... He rolled a 16, so holy crap, is a big attack bonus. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big nasty nasty. Um, so, let's see here. Mm hmm. Close all the things I don't need right now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Uh, it's all right. This is what happens when I jump I ahead. Spare character rolled up. <laughs> <laughs> He's not one dead yet. Android. I'm basically one of the androids. He's not dead yet. Hold on. There's someone at my door. <laughs> okay. Well. It reaches out. And it has you grappling. Prad. I'm going to try and shoot the thing with my rifle. If I can find my... There's my actions. Where is he? There he is. And whiff, I will miss. And I'm done. All right. There is no transport walker. Let me remove that. Rosk. Rosk, are you back? I know he said somebody was at his door. Rosk is not back. All right, we're going to move on to the next. Guy go. Okay, I'm just going to try to zap it with my pistol and pray. <laughs> it's like, what is it with you meat things always trying to get eaten? And I'm going to zap it. Leave my sections out. Okay. What's this Actually hit. Good for you. What's this thing CR? Three. Okay. And at the end of my turn, that'll end my turn up, and then, then my robot gets its attack at the end of my turn. So, so I'll skip. That'll lay me right into okay. guy go. Hold on. Um, I made a mistake here. Um. It would have missed Matt. And um, let me go back and um, because uh, it still would have missed. Okay. Um, I was going to see if Paul's attack might have hit, but it did not. <laughs> Span, no, it is not. It's, it's, it's a, a 14 weird hits. Oh, EAC anyway. Yeah, he was, um, let's see, let me look at this. Because it, it is blinded in this light. So it's kinetic armor class with 16. And so he would have, he would have missed with the hunting rifle. But I wanted to give him a chance. But I can, um, take that damage back off. And the grappled back off of Rosk. Um... Guy, go. Does your robot get to act? Yes, it does. Because it doesn't have to move; it can strike. So it's just going to try to club it. 
Nice. Whap! Now I got the song stuck in my head. Dang it. Yeah, good, pretty good clubbing, too. All right, Nine this points. thing... Be sure this... hostile action. Be sure hostile action. This thing is obviously flinching from the light in the in the area. It does not like the light. Um, and since Matt is not here, I'm going to go ahead and take his character's turn. He would have taken Hi. five. Oh, there it is. Um, go ahead. Um, I um, rescinded it. It did not hit you or do damage or grapple you. It is your turn. Go ahead and take that turn. Um, knowing this is going to have a reach on me. Um, I'm going to uh, fire a shot and then move back. Well, no, you're going to want to take a... You want to oh. take a guarded step back and then shoot, because if you shoot, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to hit you. <laughs> okay, guard back, so back up. Okay. Feet. And then... Uh, take your shot. This is my big gun. Pew pew. <laughs> pew pew. Where are you? There you are. Uh, where is it? Uh, knife. The attack. On him. Oh man, did I get oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. This thing is basically it's blinded. Blinded. All right. Yeah, it's and... trying to fight back, but it can't really see because of the light. Oh wait, wrong way. Then. Martian Cat, thank you for the biddies. I had nine points of damage. Electric and fire damage. Okay. All right. Ow. All right, now we will go back around to the top. This thing will lash out. Oh. Yeah, it's going to lash out with its tentacle again at you. Why did... Oh, he had a missed chance because of blind. And, um... And he hit anyways. Alright, so... This time he will... Flick that tentacle out. Snatch you by your favorite chest. Sorry, I had a visitor. <laughs> Grapple you. And drag you closer to him. Brad. I'm going to take another shot at him. Actually, can I try a trick attack first using stealth? You see, ours is Yes, what? you can. Um, His CR is three. His CR is three, so you need a so 23, 23. But I'm going to give you a plus four to that roll because Doesn't matter, he's a blind. A one. a one is a fail on that. Okay. There's, there's my one for the night, hopefully. My only one. Okay, so I'm just a regular shot with a rifle. Hold on. Yeah. That should Yeah, hit. you guys are at the hot hand tonight. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it is hurting. Yeah, it's looking pretty bloodied. It is. Rosk. This thing is attached to you. I'm attached to it? Yeah, you're attached to it. If you wish, you may try to break the grapple this round, but that will be your action. All right, yeah, sure. Let's break away from this. Let's do that. Um, all right. See. Use your strength. Yep, use strength or athletics if you have athletics. Actually, I'll give you an acrobatics roll versus 
his strength. Okay, acrobatic. But he is strong. So twenty. Make that, make that acrobatics check. Yeah, you need to get a twenty. Oops, my bad. Acrobatic. I saw it roll oh. off. I saw it roll off. All right. You are unable to break free of him. Do you wish to attack with your ranged weapon? Yes. It'll provoke an attack. attack of opportunity if you do. I'm going to be eaten alive if I don't. Do you have a hand to hand weapon? Yeah, I'll use my knife. All right. So you're going to shank him instead. All right. Make your roll yeah. to hit. Giggity. 18. Giggity, yeah! Giggity goo. <laughs> and it's... Max damage, not bad. Max damage, right. You stick this thing in the in its ribs and it, it grunts. <coughs> but it still has a hold of you. Guy go. Nine. I'm going to shoot it again and Complain about and complain about you know. Try not to get eaten, meaty. I'll try to stay alive. Zap it for three more, and then that's my turn. Then it's the robot that's just going to attack. All right, make the robot attack. And the robot hit it. I'm about to And the robot, Boom. you know, reaches out and smacks it on the side of the head, and it kind of staggers and slumps against the um, side of the container and dies. Yay! <laughs> or it, it's unconscious at the very least, but it's dying. But once it stops shrieking, the, the band will come back out, and they'll tell you that... Um, you know, it's a wild animal, and it's dangerous. Um, you'd probably best off put it down. Okay, is there anything else in the container? No. Um, there looks like the remains of whatever was fed to it. Any idea why this thing, who was keeping one of these here? Was it your manager? No. Those come from Vesk 3, where we come from, but... We have no idea why that one would be here. But but our manager, you know, I can't believe he betrayed us the way he did. That no good thinky sly. So, how do we go about getting our stuff back? You said goblins, and they'll they'll come out and. They'll start. You see their bodies there. You'll see. You'll take a look at your vehicle. And, you uh, might want to ask the stewards about a about a missing audio tape. I have a missing audio disc. All right. You saw him take what would have been an autographed copy of a disc. It would not have been a master disc. Okay. You, although, actually, I don't know if you would know that. Well, it wouldn't. I'll ask about a disc. Did you autograph auto your master disc? No, the master disc, you know, um, all it says on it is master disc. But um, God, with, without that, it would be months of work to re record it. And without instruments, uh, we got nothing. Uh, we have, I have no idea. Now, I will remind you guys that. You have a goblin in custody that might be custody. able to give you some answers. Here, let me unlock the go. tokens and let you guys. Yes, I'll go. I'll go shake the goblin the out. I'll, I'll ask the skittermanders about the baby we have locked up in their bus. Remind them it's a wild animal. And they probably shouldn't let it loose in the station. It'll be fine. No, I mean, seriously, if they find out you let a wild, an, an, an unlicensed animal loose in the station, they'll probably kick you out and fine you. 
We didn't let it loose. They we won't see it that way. We didn't bring him here. They're not ours. Okay. Anyone want a pet? You guys do have a, a baby skittermander, but like I said, they're four. I was about to say that. We should feed the goblins of the baby skittermander. <laughs> or threaten to. I can do that. Last ride. We get a very tacos. least to and see if you're Welcome see if you respond to the to Ship that. of Fools. I love the name. <laughs> All right, so you can um the goblin you 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 zapped him with your your shock pistol, right? That's how you. Yep. All right, you can slap him awake and he'll be like <laughs> What do you want, ugly? We want to know where the equipment went and what you, who let you in here and how you and, wh and where the equipment you took out went the equipment oh yeah <laughs> well um think he told me um we could have the stuff you know he, he gave us the bus he, he gave us he gave us the gear uh, so he you know where's the gear well, yeah where'd well, you take the gear well you, we sold it to who <laughs> um, and where's the money well we used the money to build the bus knot. But I can tell you where the gear is. How about you show us or we feed you to the or we feed you the little thing we got locked up in the box? Oh, I can't go there. They said they'd kill me if I went back. But um we, we sold the gear to a gang. Uh, they call themselves the Vapor Dogs. I can tell you where the hideout is. I have a better idea. We'll let you go once we find once we confirm the vapor dogs are there. I'll have my robot stand back and I'll break your neck if you're lying to us. He'll look at your robot and he'll look back at you. And um <laughs> Well, Salosan, I know that name. He, 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 will, he will smile with his big needly mouth full of needly goblin teeth and <laughs> say Sure, sure, you got a deal. You got a deal. And I'll, the, I'll, I'll order the robot to grab him by the back of the neck. So if he if he moves, it'll squeeze. If he do, if he doesn't keep if he doesn't guide us straight, I'll just tell it to squeeze. And, and he'll let out he'll let out a, a kind of a squeal. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see if we we'll see about your instruments. We'll look for your. We might be able to find. You might want to start looking for your manager's whereabouts and fixing your bus. We'll start looking for your instruments. Like we we don't we don't know how to thank you, thank you so much. And oh, if we catch up with that no good thinky sly, I got something for him. And she'll like simultaneously pump three fists into three open palms. <laughs> well, if you find the information, well, I suggest you look for information for him while we go to the gang and see if we can get your instruments back. We've we've. We've never been to Absalom Station before. We have no idea where to go or where to look or anything. We don't know anybody. We only know you. And, well, we knew Thinky or we thought we did. But now I don't know I can trust him. I'll see what I can find out. Oh. So you, Prad, are you up for rustling, rustling up and recovering stolen goods? Yeah, sure. I'm thinking maybe there's something in it for me. I'm thinking so too. We I, do need to discuss. We do need to discuss, say, profit sharing or something, considering you don't have any money now. Who's to say I don't uh, have yeah. any money now? <laughs> These guys have got like, I don't know, maybe you could sign a whole bunch of discs for us. They're worth True. a thousand on the, uh, no. a thousand on the market. To the right buyer, yeah, they could be. So, they're like, look, we get those master tapes. We're, we're going to be big. Obscure Orbits, welcome aboard the Ship of Fools. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Right. But, and now, no, no, you know, we'll, we'll make it up to you when we get big. And we're going to be big. Question is, is do we want to invest in the band? Because that's really what this is. 
Yeah, it's an investment. Trust me, so. we, won't, we won't forget you when we make the big time. Let's put it this way. If we recover your masters, we'll want to cut of the profits. Less than your manager would have charged you. You know, we, we do need new managers. Would you guys be our manager? Oh, when you must have the skill to be their managers? No. Actually, I do know a good lawyer that could probably help. I know a very... I'm friendly with a very good lawyer that could help. Hey, the Matt, Matt, Matt right. has entered the Matrix again. <laughs> I'm in the Matrix again. Great. I'm gonna I'm gonna call to, I'm gonna call Tome on my headset. Just curious, Matt, are you on a laptop? Yes, I am on a laptop. And Is it on a wireless you. connection? Is it on a Wi-Fi yes. connection? Yes. That's your problem. Ding, ding, you ding, need ding, a LAN. Ding, ding, you ding. need a LAN cable to connect that laptop. The fact that you're on wireless oh. is what's doing that. I don't really have a LAN a line, and if I, if it is, then it's up in the master bedroom, and it's gonna suck big time. All right, then we'll just deal. I don't mind yeah. being part of a matrix. We'll have to basically. Get, uh, we'll have yeah. to get Matt a two hundred foot long cable. It's a moving art. <laughs> yeah. I've got a 175 foot long cable. Oh, I'm sure. I've got a long Easy one too, to but it's hooked up to Cat's computer right now. All right. Um, make so. Yeah, I'm on, like, watching me put myself on the other laptop. That. So, this goblin, who you haven't even asked his name. Um, we don't care what his name is. <laughs> we'll tell you that um, the vapor dogs hang out at a at a at a little dive called Roscoe's, and um, no, the city is big. It's not a place that any of you have ever heard of. Turn down my creepy music just a little bit. Um, but he'll lead you there, and in a, you know, if um, any one part of the downside could be seedier than another, um, Roscoe's is definitely in a seedier part of town. And as you you roll up on this little dive bar, you can see um, you know, half a dozen grav bikes parked out front, tricked out in the in the vapor dogs, um gang colors of green and black you've got the goblin in tow right yeah held by the neck by my robot all right you guys gonna all roll on in rosk you want to go for you want to knock on the door first you're the big impressive one <laughs> it's a bar it's i walk right into the bar all right you walk he into the like, bar he thinks he's a freaking cowboy this one <laughs> I'm just gonna casually walk in. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to the back of the line. <laughs> yes, that'd be fine. I'll take the middle with the robot beside me holding the goblin. All right. <sighs> you guys, um, push your way into the bar, and um, I'm gonna share the map with you guys. Hey, the map. I won't necessarily. I'm like cowboy. Well, it depends on how things go down, whether or not I need to share that with anybody else. I, I barred. Close that out. The door is over here. I just wanted to. I'm not going to put tokens down because at this point. Um, I'm just seeing a question mark. You can yeah, see. Yeah. Oh, it's, it hasn't loaded for you. Oh, yet. there it is. Yeah, okay, um, still loading for me too. Oh, there we go. There are. Um, All right. Okay, there we go. There are um, what look like three um, guys in you know their black jackets, and they have a you know a green stylized dog head. And it looks like the dog is breathing vapor. V 
vapor dogs. And these guys with these colors on the back of their jacket are sitting at the bar kind of drinking. And um, there's um, a rather tall, slender, older woman um, behind the bar. She got spectacles on her nose and her hair is kind of drawn back in a ponytail. And um, she's just kind of standing at the bar, idly polishing a glass. And um, these three guys, you know, when you come in, there's a jukebox blasting, you know, some old crusty music. And um, now none of them seem to notice you. You guys, you know, step in other than the three guys at the bar and the bartender, it's empty, but the music's really loud and they're all sitting there and um, it looks like they're passing some sort of um, illegal combustible substance back and forth between them. <laughs> The goblin. So, do you recognize anybody? Uh, well, I'm, uh, honestly, all humans kind of look the same to me. No clothing, no insignia. <coughs> well, I that's guess them, the vapor dogs. Uh, th those are the guys we sold the stuff to. Okay. All right, Walk we forward. Will Proc, proc march him up towards him and say, hey, where's, yeah. where's the band's gear? And, and as, as you guys are um, kind of walking up there, the bartender will kind of, you know, put her head up and nod. And one of the other guys um, will turn around and, you know, he's got a really kind of a, a leering kind of slimy expression. And he's like, y'all look like you're in the wrong neighborhood. What brings you to our bar? This little man sold you some equipment. It wasn't his. Is that so? And um, they'll say, and what equipment was that? I'll take perception rolls from everybody. <laughs> Can't see my hand in front of my face. Oh, cool. I did better. 18, oh, how about 17. that? Yeah. There, over on the stage, right down there, kind of stacked up in a corner, is a set of band equipment. And um, that quite clearly says on the triple bass drums, Uba Duba. Well, there's our missing equipment. Hey! Your missing equipment? We paid for that. You bought stolen gear, mate. Did we? Yeah, you did. You got you need papers. To have it out. You got papers you need... to prove this is yours. No, but we the bad actually we did actually do. This. Yeah, I guess we we'll have to get the constables to go and retrieve it, but we we'll can always get the stewards in here with the band that it belongs to. You go do that. See if it's here when you get back. I'm going to wait here to make sure the gear doesn't I'm go I'm going to call him. All right. Who are you going to call? You just call the steward's number? Yeah. Call Fife. Is he on your? Is he on the people you know list? Yes. The people I know. The Yeah, he's one of the people I know. I, I picked the both constables, the dirty one and the clean one. <laughs> Good choice. Good choice. Come on, move. Um, you, you call Fife and he's like, um, roll me a d12. Let's see if he's available right now. Okay. Oh! Uh. Nope. He's on holiday. You. It rings twice and then you hear, You're for each constable five. I'm unable to come to the phone right now, but leave me a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Beep! <laughs> I'll leave a message about gang activity and name the bar. Would you like me to save this message, or would you, like, or, would you or would you like to leave it there? I'll ask them. And they're just smiling. And, um, he's like, you guys are real cute. Much as I would like to add another constable badge to my collection, perhaps we can come to a more amicable solution. Now, I paid good money for my equipment. If you would like... I can sell it back to you, or we could come to another arrangement. 
Or you can wait for the constables to show up. I got time. And he'll kind of kick back on his bar stool and um, cross his legs. And he's got a really smarmy look on his face. I'm going to ask like Brad, you look the kind, like the kind of person that deals with this kind of stuff. Kick him in the ding ding. Okay. I'm just going to start walking towards the stage. Tell him to fuck off. This is our gear. Yeah, I'm just going to tell. I'm just start walking towards the stage and put my robot between the robot and the goblin between me and them. You can have I'm the basically... goblin here. Here's a gift. We don't want it. <laughs> Get your money out of this thing. I'm just going to walk this. I'm just going to start walking to the stage with the robot in between, with the keeping the robot between me and them. All right, give me one moment here to set something up. If we're playing Wild West, we may as well play Wild West. Uh oh, he's laying the grid down. We're doomed. Well, uh, it means that there's going to be combat. Yep. There didn't have to be. I know there didn't have to be, but <laughs> look who you look. Look who you're talking to. They they offered you another solution. You didn't even hear him out. I didn't want to hear him out. It's yeah. not it's not theirs to begin with. Not gonna negotiate with people that steal somebody else's shit. They didn't steal anything. All right, they accepted the gear of other people's stuff. They need to get their money off of the goblins. This guy, this little guy, owes you some money. All right, you guys see that little red square on the map? Yeah. You can place yourselves anywhere within that when I put you on the map. <laughs> I'm just going to remind them that the, go that the goblin owes them some money then because this wasn't his to sell. Okay, which is the entrance? Is that the one? Is the okay, let me way down to this? Go ahead. The entrance is all the way back to yeah. the left on the. Okay, so that we. Yeah, that thing the down there's a stage. There's okay. a bathroom. Then there's some back rooms that you can see on the map. Let me put them on the map. And where are these dudes? I'm getting there. Okay. They were at the bar, so I'm assuming they're where the stools are. I was wondering if the goblin is going to be also placed down as well. Yes, I'm getting there. Robot, right. if they, I was, I was just send a send a quiet message, robot. If they come at us, hit them with the goblin. <laughs> I'm just going to spray down the the, the goblin. No, club them with the... It literally hit them with oh. the goblin. Oh, fine. All right, I'm let's add the goblin. Yeah. Goblin was being held by the robot. Yeah, so he's he got it by the back there. of the neck. All right. So you start walking, they're going to draw. They're going to be like, oh, it didn't have to be like this. And I'm you not you should have gotten your money back for the goblins. <laughs> yes, sir, bro. Oh. Please make it good. Please make it good. Oh, okay. Well, we're doing an initiative. Yep. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I just, remember you're, I hit the wrong button and I just re-rolled all your initiatives. I manually reset the ones you rolled. Let's see. I'd re-roll my initiative. <laughs> I'll re-roll my initiative if you want us to. I don't want to re-roll. Mine's good enough. 
No, no not guys... in my luck. My roll would be even worse, so I'll go with what I have. Mine can only get one worse. <laughs> but yeah, I'll live with it. Uh, no. The first thing that happens when it looks like um, shit's about to jump off is the bartender will duck down behind the bar. He's going for the scattergun. Or just getting clear of the line of fire. Bartender was not wearing the gang colors. Good to know. This hey. guy here, this guy here, will jump over the bar and take co cover. And shoot at the big lizard and miss. Yay. Rosk. He, he shot at you. He's got cover, the guy behind the bar. The other two it do not. It shows Rosk okay. being grappled. Oh, let me remove that. He is not grappled. Yeah. That was pr prior. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Ross, what are you going to do? Move and shoot. You want to, the... the, with your hit and run, you want to shoot this round and then move in next round and melee because you get a bonus when you do that. Oh, so I'll just shoot and then move in and shoot, melee. Shoot this round and move in, the next round melee. Shoot and. Shoot yeah. then close again. Shoot game. then move in close. And move in you'll close. Want, you'll want to shoot first, to you, so you don't provoke that attack of opportunity. But yeah, all right. Uh, uh, check this one instead. Get it. You hit him. Good going. Oh nice. yeah. And then I'll move. There you go. And then. Perfect. And then stab him with the knife. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's next round. Next round. You only next get round. One. Yes, next round. All right. Next round. Got it. Now, remember next round when you attack him, you get a plus two to hit. Plus two to hit. Yes, that's your hit and run bonus. And as you get higher in level, what you can do that will, with that will be better. Space Goblin Zapparator does not have his junk laser or his dog slicer because I imagine you took both away from him. Yeah, the robot's going to drop him when his turn comes anyway. Just let him go. Well. <laughs> oh, he's wiggling there. <laughs> it, well, he's struggling to get loose if the robot drops him. Is the robot going to drop him? At the end, of, yeah, yeah, it's eventually just going to let him go. Just tell him to run. All right. We don't need that him he anymore. That he will do. Is he'll bolt towards the exit. Later, chumps! The next gang member. Well, he was going to jump over the bar, but... He pulls up basically a retractable baton and snaps it out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see. Kinetic. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. He goes to whip it out, and as he does, he smacks his hand on the bar and cuts it open. You can see blood start running. Oh. Yeah. Now, he... <laughs> he cracked his own hand, and he has, um, he has picked up the bleeding condition from his fumble. Yes, and this can happen to player characters too, just beware. But he is he is bleeding, his hand is bleeding. Prad. Mm. All right. Gang members and... are CR1. You need a 21 to trick attack them. Okay, I'm going to Actually move no, back. they're CR.5. You need a 20. Okay. To trick attack them. I'm going to mute um, that's some kind of booth there is what I'm assuming. 
Where? Let me see your... Where I'm standing? Yes, that's actually... That is, um... So if I jump behind that you... Is a space, it... That is a space between two booths, and that blue line is the door into the bathroom. Okay, so, well then I'm going to go into that space. That's a booth, so have and that's a booth. And I just me, want cover from these this. guys. Let me switch this over so everybody else can see what we're seeing. Let me close some of the other stuff. Perfect. There we go. All right. But all right, so you moved to to there to take cover. Yeah, to take partial cover, okay. I guess, from those guys there. You and can, then I'm going. You can take full cover if you're, you know, crouching down. It's full cover. Okay. And but then I I want to be able to shoot them too. Yeah, you can shoot from full cover. Okay. He will. He did. And all I right. hit him. Nice. Did you try your tricky attack? You know what? No, I didn't. Let me make, do. Make can the, I do the trick yes. attack? Make the trick okay. attack roll. Uh, where's my still? Oh! oh! Boom! You do get a trick attack on him. Shoot him. Okay. Well, I... all right. I'll reroll my. Well, no, you hit him. You okay, hit him. So... Do your damage. Okay. I need a better rifle. But yeah. Everybody does. <laughs> I only do a D4. And then my trick attack is what, 2D4? No, 1D4. Uh, it's 1D4 at first level, yeah. Yeah. I'll add two more to gang member two. And then, yeah, I'll cr crouch back down. Alright, gang member two will also roll behind the bar and take cover. And... Let's see, he thought about shooting the goblin. But instead... He shoots his partner. Very close. He shoots <laughs> the big scary robot. Ouch. Guy go. It gets, it gets a minus one of the damage, so. Okay, I will do that. I guess the robot absorbs one point of damage. That's why I gave up the ranged weapon. Well, me, I am going to. Do. This bar. How high up is the? How high up is the um? Is the stage? About. Two feet, two and a half feet. And that I can use for cover. Okay. No, the the uh, no, the stage is not high enough. You can use the equipment for cover, but it might get damaged if they start shooting at it. Yeah, let's not destroy their equipment. I'll move over here because I can't quite get the cover yet. If you just wanted to run this round, you could get through that door and uh. No. My my weapon's close range. <laughs> I'll move up there and then I'm going to move up there and then I'm going to zap the guy that's in hand to hand with. Actually, looking at this, I want to make a correction. That blue line, Paul, by you is not a door. The door to the restroom is back there. That's a secret window so they can watch him pee. It's just a neon <laughs> sign on the wall. Okay, no worries. I wasn't planning on going through that door anyway, Rob. I'm going to sit behind this uh, booth here and plink away. Uh, anyways, um, Gago, you moved there. What else are you going to do? Shoot the, I'm going to shoot the gangbanger, gangbanger the rest that's bleeding. Okay. Oh! Oh, uh, what did you shoot him with? My pulse pump. caster pistol, electric energy. So, wing shot, critical oh, effect. Oh, look, you got the extreme electric. 
Crit oh, effect. Gee. One of the target's technological devices stops working for one round. His, his gun. All right, do your damage. And you shorted out his gun. It's the only tech device he has. Well, it doesn't matter. I killed him. Well, uh, knocked him out. He's twitching, <laughs> on, he's twitching on the floor. With, he's twitching on the floor after being stunned. He's drooling. He's still got a bleeding from a compound fracture in his hand. <laughs> okay, how far can this guy move? Can this guy climb on the bar to get in melee with the one there? My robot can get into melee range with the guy on the on the other side of the bar. He can get into melee if he's standing on the other side of the bar. The guy's still gonna get a cover bonus. Okay, so I'll, I'm gonna climb. Well, I can move six. Will put me right next to him if I climb over the bar. So the robot yes. doesn't clamber over the bar to get to him. However, that because you'll be moving through a threatened space will provoke an attack of opportunity from him. Okay. It'll tie him up at least till I get the cover. And he missed. Yay. <laughs> All right. And um, are you, you going to move again, or are you going to give up your action so that he can have an action? Oh, no, I, that, I just did everything. It, it, okay, it could, so I can only make it move or attack each round. Ah, so I made it move this round. I see. Next round, I can make it attack, but in, a, in five levels, I'll be able to do both with it. Right now, it's move or attack. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm not here for you. So it's the same when it sees the bartender. Bartender will do nothing this round. Let's see. <laughs> Vapor Dog 13 is now engaged with the robot. We'll turn and start beating it with a stick the way Yoda. Beat R2 D2. <laughs> oh! More like that's wham! Six damage. Yeah, that, that robot's taking a beating right now. I'm, I'm taking a. Let me um, adjust it for your damage resistance. Yes, I have three hit points now instead of two. Woohoo! You got three hit points! Rosk. Uh, the guy wait, in so one of you is down. He still, does he still down. got that bonus on the next guy he melee? Is he still dead? Or is he down? He, He's unconscious and twitching. You unconscious. You want to hit him anyways? Yeah. If not, no, I'll I guess you're let, your let, let me. You you made a good question, Dan. Let me at. Let me look at opening volley. Um. No, the opening volley bonus is against the same opponent the first round. So you, if you want to hit this guy on the ground, you can have a plus two to hit him. Yeah. Or, or you can hit somebody else. I'll do a plus two to hit him. All right. Add a plus two in the modifier box and then make your attack roll. Plus two in the modifier. See in the, little, the box in the lower left of the table? Just click on that box and type in a two. So, and nice. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's an out of 20s, I tell you, this is bitching. Alright, do your damage. Yeah, I do tell. Oh, that's great. It's awesome. Oh, it's raining outside. The storm finally hit me. And he takes. He is wounded as well. And, um, and you know, because he is because he's down, am I able to still move around him? Yeah, he's down. I'm going to say at this point he is flat up dead. Yeah, I think it's okay, right so too. Can I move it as well? Yeah, you can move. Right. Okay. You just climb over the bar like my robot did. Yeah. Climb over the bar. Well, here, let me tell you something. Let me yeah. show. Let me give you an example of how something works here. Attacks yeah. of opportunity in this game are a lot harsher. If you are in, the, say, you are in that square, you are yeah. adjacent to the enemy while you are there. Yeah. Which means if you move from that square, even if you move into another square next to him, say there, you'll provoke an attack of opportunity. They work yeah. the same way. So. 
if from here, if you made a move like this, came around, oh. and then at him, you could get in front of him without making that attack, without provoking okay. that attack of opportunity. It's just being clever about how you move, but you've got enough movement to do that. Yeah. But you've already had your attack, so you come around the bar on him, and he's pretty hurt too. That's where I stop. Right about then, you hear a flush come from the bathroom, and another gang member comes out, buckling up his trousers, and looks around. And looks around. And the cigarette and the falls, cigarette out, of falls out of his mouth as he shot. <laughs> Ted, if you're, Ted if you're connecting, mute your microphone, mute your microphone on, the, um, on the, um, Ninja. Ninja. I hear me. I hear me. All right. The Zapparator is, has left the building. He's gone. <laughs> you may or may not ever see him again. Is that on your back? Yes, sir. And, um, Ted will catch you up in a moment with where Mike is and what he's doing. Um, okay, I'm going to start with a, a trick attack. Like you said, they're point five, so you need a 20. Boom. There's a 20. There it is. All right, let's... Uh, let's see if I can hit him. Ted, roll me an initiative roll for Mike. Because you're about to walk into the bar where this is going on. And these are going to be in cover, right? The, if the you're moment. shooting at the guys behind the bar, yes, they are in cover. Yeah. Well, they're the only guys I can see. And I will do that. And I just will... And my initiative won't go before that, right? Well, your initiative will go wherever you land in the um, initiative order. It looks like you ended up last. <laughs> and I hit. Anyways, all right. So I do that. And then 2d4. Uh, oh, okay. 1d4. Oh, yeah. I keep thinking I'm second level. Sorry. Not yet. I know. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nicely done. Eight points and of damage. Which one was number 13? was, yeah, the one at the north. Yeah. Four more points of damage. All right, he's hurt pretty bad. Then maybe the robot can finish him. That's what I'm hoping. Dogs of War gang number two. Well, um, take out his club. Oh. Bank. Oh, jeez. Right, I'm just going to take the standard because I don't want to look up what a sunder does. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Why did it not do the critical? All right. One more point. So, Rask. Uh oh. He's already at nine fatigue. He's actually taken a point of damage. As he cracks you on the head, and a little trickle of blood starts trickling down your temple. Guy go. Okay, I move around to the edge of the bar here so, so that guy's not in cover anymore. Then I'm going to shoot him. He is him. not in cover there. Yep, and then I'm going to use the corner of the bar to duck down so I'm in cover from the other guy. <laughs> First, I'm going to shoot this guy. Okay. Man, you guys have got the hot hand tonight. Last time, you guys couldn't hit anything. Yeah, it couldn't hit the. I'm a whopping one damage to it, so. 
Hey. <laughs> and now my robot's gonna club the other one like a baby seal. That's it for me. Now my robot's attack on the other guy. Aww. Yeah. Ah. Roll off the set. That's it for me. King number 13. Does not like the robot. And is going to attempt to break the robot and miss. Yeah, he will you... break him. He will break you. Rosk. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, how far is the uh, the one that came out of the bathroom? If you hold control and click on him, it will give you a range. Uh, not giving me a number. Right in the middle of the line. Hard to see. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Uh-huh. All right. It's 100 feet doing? away. Yeah, not going to happen. All right, I'm going to basically shoot at number two. What, what weapon do you have? What's it's the range the on? Conqueror Red Star, about 60 uh, in range. It has a range of 60? That means mm -hmm. at 100, you take a minus two to hit. Aren't that's you like hand-to-hand -hand with all. someone, though? I also have a uh, spark knife as, uh, for running. R runner. Um, yes. If you shoot at that guy at range, the one that's standing next to you will get a free attack on you. I think there's somebody at the door, guys. I'll be right back. All right. All right. So you, do you want to... Do you still want to shoot at the other guy, or do you want to... I'll shoot at the one at the bathroom, just so I can get his uh, attention. Okay. Minus two to hit. Meanwhile, so do I take a minus two in on the, the modifier? Box. Yep, on the modifier. And um, two. No, yeah. not plus two. Not yeah, minus two. So what you can do is just hold the mouse over it and scroll the mouse wheel down, or you can put in a minus two from the oh, number pad. Oh, there you go. Meanwhile, minus two. He busted you on the side of the head with a um, opportunity attack, and you hit his buddy. Do your damage. His buddy. Oh, you I hit. hit? You, you Roll hit. damage. Yes, you hit. Roll damage. Oh, I hit. <laughs> and you fire off that laser. Fire on the laser. Vapor dog number nine. Let me look at the range of the azimuth laser. Has a range of 80 feet. Holy crap. Like Brad needs to steal that. Brad needs to take that off that guy's corpse. It's a pistol, but oh, still, close. Pratt, because it's a pistol, it's a small arm. He can get the. He's going to move in, so he doesn't have a penalty, and then he's going to shoot at you. You have partial cover behind the bar. Huh? And he missed. Mike, you this, yes. This, so this, let let me let me wind back for a minute and catch Mike up to this point. All right, you remember what happened last time? You guys stopped the bus knot and we ended it there. They investigated the container where the bus knot came from, and they rescued a skittervander band who asked them to help recover their equipment. They questioned the one goblin that you guys captured alive and he led you to the vapor dogs gang hangout because the goblins had sold the skittermanders band equipment to the vapor dogs you guys came here to negotiate the return and well 
negotiations broke down and you were outside as backup and you heard gunfire and now you come in to this situation you can see um, there's a gang member with his back to you um, and let me share this map with you um, who's just come out of the bathroom he drew a laser pistol and shot it at Rosk you can see a bunch of them behind the bar um, scuffling what would you like to do what is gang member number nine doing? gang member number nine just drew his laser pistol and shot towards the bar missing missing well I'm gonna see if I can shoot better than he can he can It turns out I cannot. <laughs> Hold on, let me see what his armor class is because what I was going to. What did you shoot him with? Laser pistol? Oh, I got a roll that's a hit because he was flat footed to you. He didn't know you were coming in. So give him some damage. I was going to just say that. You look him dead square in the back and shot him. To, uh, to be uh, fair, it's not quite a back shot. <laughs> but remember. If they ask you why you shot on the back, it's because his back was to you. Nice. It only mostly a back shot, which means it was slightly not a back shot. But he wasn't paying attention to him. That's, he gets, that's what he gets for not paying attention to him. More of the same. Um, let's start with the trick attack. Just cause. And that won't get it, so I'll just uh. roll, a, roll a shoot the son of a... And they are on the cover. Marshall, yeah. No, I think the one that I'm shooting at, which is a uh, 13, is under full cover, right? He's in a fist fight with a robot right now. He is not under full cover. He has partial cover. Oh, okay. Let me change yeah. that to Pico. Yeah. And then let's see. And that will miss, and I am done. Vapor dog number two. there to see him do that yeah. he will swing at your robot again and miss and then he's going to run for it does your robot get reactions I think so let's say he I'm does not... give him an opportunity attack okay we'll look that up later All right, as he goes to run, the hammer comes down. And oh! he, he doesn't run. <laughs> he, as Remember, this thing's programmed to... not to kill, so it just knocked him flat. It's you programmed need... to take him down. You need to get him a big silver hammer, and then we can call him Maxwell. Okay, that's a, a really obscure Beatles reference, and I love it. Thank you. Unfortunately, oh, it's not I do not believe the um, the rule from 5e stands in this game. Oh, you, yeah. you can't declare something uh, no. non-lethal unless you actually have a non-lethal or stun-capable weapon. Okay, I'll get a stun baton for him and later. So, when yeah, I so it. he just got beat down. And he is dying. A medicine check might save him. But he's a scumbag gang member. And this is Tales mm. from the Spike, so... Why should you shed tears for him? He would do no lesser to us. So he's dead, or is it, or did he run off? Um, he got clubbed while he was oh. trying to climb over the bar. Mm. And then I so skipped dead. over nine or number two. Number two is um looks around and he will realize all his buddies are dead and you will visibly see him turn and look at the bartender 
who will nod and then he'll drop his weapon and he'll say, look, take the stuff and um, just take the stuff. Go. Don't come back. See how easy that was? I apologize. I apologize. I apologize for the mess with your friends. And I'm going to start walk over and grab the gear. All right. And um, I'm going to assume that because none of them were. Well, I'm going to say the exception is the one that Ross hit when he was down. That guy's dead. The rest of them will probably survive. But um, you have um, not made friends of the Vapor Dogs. <laughs> That's okay. And made. so, all right. We are a little bit better than halfway through the show. So I say let's take 10. Let's refresh our beverages and do whatever else it is that we need to do. And we will be back in a few minutes. Those of you out there in the audience, stay tuned. We'll be back with more of our um, improvisational mayhem right after this break. Sweet.
And we are back. Let me... Gave it a shot in the dick by <clears throat> reviving uh, Vanilla and uh, Burning Crusade. Hey. But, you know, that, that was so long ago. Fuck, I've lived that already. I never got into WoW. Anyways, we are back. All right. You guys have the band's equipment. Um... Now you just have to figure out how you're going to get it back. None of you own a vehicle, do you? Well, does dead guy want to have a bike? Or keys on him? Keys on him? Do, the, do these goons have a vehicle? There are half a dozen motorcycles or grab bikes out front. Um, yeah. The dead goon has, has keys to a bike on him. Um, bartender will just watch. She won't say anything. If you take one of the sets of keys, but you're not going to be able to put band equipment on a motorcycle. It's got to be an Uber or some or kind of some service kind of where you call to pick this shit up. Yeah. U-Haul? Rent a van? Yeah, yeah. yeah something yeah. like that. There's got to be. Pardon me, man. Uh, Do you have it? Yeah. For 50 credits, you guys can hire a truck to get the stuff back to the, um, okay. to um, the hangar. All right. And um, you will make your way back there. And... Um, you know, Zura, the band leader, the one who's talks the most, will say, "Oh, thank you, thank you. We got our instruments back. Yes, now we can jam again. Yes, but we need the master tapes, and we don't know where to look. You didn't find the master tapes, did you? No. no apparently, they're with your manager. He's not our manager anymore. I think he's fired now." I'm going to call my lawyer and see if she can maybe help these guys out because they're going to need something. Okay. And she's an advocate for the poor anyway. You have a lawyer? Yes, my one friend is Tome, a female android legal counsel. Our... I actually have a lawyer. <laughs> yes. I know. It's, my, it's You pick your friend, your enemy. I got an enemy that's a cop, a friend that's a lawyer. And I know <laughs> a cop Ted, did I have a food to do that for, for Mike? 
No, but I, it sounds like an awesome idea. Here, let me do this. I'm going to share this with you. Um, and the notes, people. Look yeah, at that you... list. What you're going to do is you're going to pick one person off of that list that is a friend. You are going to pick three people off of that list that you know and one person on that list that is either an enemy, somebody you are at odds with, a rival, somehow, or whatever, you clash. And I'll let you decide all of that. But, and then put those in the notes on your character sheet. That way, I, I will reference back to that at times. And you'll notice that some of them have, you know, they all, there's a reason for each and every one of them to be your friend. They all have advantages. But, meanwhile, you guys, um, you can get back to the storage container. Um, they are very happy, but um, they don't even know where to begin um, looking for their master tapes or where their manager, and his name is Thinky Sly, T-H-I-N-K-Y. S L Y E, thinky sly Is, because he thinky I've got, sly. I've got a I've got a link uplink to the data sphere in my head, so can I actually just like call it look like literally Google search him? Make me a computer's check. Yes. You may as well. That's a, what the data link is for. Let's see what I can do. Oh, that's bad. Um. <laughs> There's a Facebook profile on him, but it hasn't been posted to in a long time. Facebook profile. That's funny. Does it give a, does it give a last look? Does it give like a financial address or anything? Or like a wet or like, you know, contact information? No, um You know it's old? Nope. It just says um Thinky Sly, um you know, acquisitions. Um, says he's self-employed and that he's in the acquisitions business. And you can tell that Thinky Sly is an all-black Isoki. A black rat. He is a black <laughs> rat. Yes, he is. <laughs> and he thinks, okay. and he's Thinky Sly. I'm going to call my lawyer and see if she can contact these these people because they may need see, tell her I know some poor people that need some help. Uh, roll me a d12. Let's see if your lawyer picks up. I don't have much luck with this, but let's see. Why? Hello, Geico. Um, Hello. What can I do for you today? I have some people you may wish... I know you're usually advocate for people in trouble, and I... I've met some people that could really use your help. Oh. Have you heard of Have you heard of a band called the Uba Dubas? And you'll hear um, Azur say, "We're not the Uba Dubas. We're Uba Duba." Okay, Uba Dubas. I apologize, Uba Duba. Yes, Uba Duba. And she'll say, um, "No, I'm not familiar with them. Should I be?" Probably not. Um, they just got attacked. They just got robbed by their manager who sicked goblins on them and stole their master tapes. They may need legal representation. That sounds pretty crappy. Um, yeah, I can maybe help them out. Um, um, send them around my way and, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, but, you know, um, I'll, I'll look into this. Um, what was their manager's name? Pinky Sly. Ahsoka of some kind. Black fur. Mm, um, I will take a look into that name, and I will get back to you, but I, I, I don't expect much. No, I don't expect much. I thought maybe mostly you'd help them with legal issues because they've been robbed and they're broken down. But they look like they have potential to make money, and apparently some of their music is worth something. They're Meanwhile, very popular with the young. Yes. Meanwhile, Zero will say, "You guys, you guys have to help us get our master tapes back." I know. Um, and um, 
Let's see. I will give Rosk and Geigo both an intelligence check. Sorry. What do I click to just make a roll on your intelligence? You should just be able to click right on your intelligence. The bonus. Okay. It occurs to you, Gaigo, that there is one other person that might actually know something about this. My boss. Your boss. Yeah, I'll call him back up. Fly by here. You were hired by Pinky, by Thinky Sly, right? Who? Guard this hangar. The person who hired you to guard the hangar you sent me to. I wasn't hired to guard the hangar. I was hired to observe the hangar. And no, I have never heard of a Stinky Bly. Thinky Sly, and do you know? Do you have any idea where? Do you have who did hire you? Because whoever it is wiped out your other team. Well, well, you know I. Oh yeah, um, uh, I can't disclose that. That's that's confidential information. I can't disclose that. No. Then you'll have to disclose the police because we got a whole dead team to deal with. Make me an intimidation check. Do it, Dan. Do it, Dan. Intimidation. I, I got a minus one to this, so. No, it doesn't ah. work. I can never intimidate this guy. Uh, Are you on some kind of vid phone? I'm literally I using the uplink in my head. Oh, okay. I've got, so a, I've got the phone and, and comments in my... Okay. You should introduce him to the Vesk here. Me, uh, I should. He knows the Vesk. He hired, yeah. The Vesk works for him, too. Yeah, the Vesk should say, hey... <laughs> because the police may ask questions for civilian damage. Just wanted to know you might they might hold us liable for the property damage. Mm. Well, well, I'll tell you what. If you keep the police out of it, I'll, I'll tell you who my client was. But um, we didn't hear it from you. You didn't hear it from me. You say there's a there's an android up my notes so I make sure I get the name right. There's um an android um that um I work with on a regular basis um works for an upscale brokerage firm. She normally negotiates mergers and acquisitions. Um her name is hubris and she hired me um and he'll forward you a digital copy of her business card thank you i apologize for the inconvenience of calling you twice today but hey, the hangar is secure now don't mention it oh the hangar is secure now so we did fulfill the contract as i said i was only hired to surveil the hangar It's like, I have no concern with the inside or what's on the inside. Um, but he will forward you um, a contact information for um, this person named Hubris. It's good to be a, pro a, a, a program designed to call the police when it sees trouble. <laughs> it's going to get you dead someday, threatening people with the police. <laughs> I know, but it's a, it's literally a security program. Program. So what does it do? It calls the cops. It's like. All right. So you guys have a number. What are you gonna do with it? Is someone better at talking to these kind of people than me? Um, I can talk to people. I'm not necessarily this, good at this, it. This person was hired to watch this area. So we're assuming they might have something to do with the robbery. I have a phone, I have a contact number, but I am not good with some types of people. Most types of people. Who is this yes. person? It is a lawyer named. It's an it's an android named Hubris who handles accounts for well high end 
clients, and she hired us to watch something that was robbed by Pinky by Thinky Sly. Thinky Sly. So we need to find oh, out yeah. if we can find an angle on Thinky Sly. To get the master tapes back for Uba Duba. Okay. I will look at them make a point not to say the Uba Dubas. <laughs> Uba Duba. Trying to be polite this time. Right, Does she want to talk to me? So you're going to call? Um... Can, can I call? It, can I go there and call on her? You I mean, my have, is there, 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 there is an actual physical address, um, and as I said, this is an urban setting, and unlike D and D, I don't expect you guys to all go the same place at the same time together. You can, but you don't necessarily have to. That being said, um, are you guys all going to go together to talk to her? I was thinking I was going to go alone on my stolen grab bike. He can okay. go alone. Then, yeah, go then for it. I'm gonna, then I'm going to go and while he's doing that, I'm going to contact Animal Control and see if they need and see if they can pick up the little wild thing right. we have here. We'll, we'll go around the table and we'll get to everybody. Let's start with Captain Mike. All right, you get on your bike and um, you know, it's a good hour ride because it's you know up in that upper scale. Um, portion of Absalom Station under the eye under the big dome and you pull up in front of this high rise building and um, you can see that the third floor is um, Hoover's Acquisitions you go into the you know main lobby and you can see that there's like a security turnstiles or gates and a bank of elevators behind it and like um it looks like maybe a security guard, um, young human lady sitting behind the desk, and um, she'll say, "Good day, sir. Do you have an appointment?" No, but I need one. If I can't get one today, I can can make one tomorrow, as soon as possible. But I'd really like to get in to see All right. Miss Hubris today. Miss Hubris, let me um let me call up to her her office and um your audio is dropped out. Okay, I, I didn't say anything. I had drawn a blank on what she was going to say for a second there. Um she will um she will um pick up the phone and you hear her make your perception roll see if you can actually hear what she's saying a seven you cannot she speaks in low tones and then she says um i i'm i'm sorry sir but her message service says you'll need to make an appointment um do you have access to her calendar when is her next available time Sir, I'm just the building receptionist. Um, I can, um, here. And she'll hand you the phone and press a number. This is her receptionist. You can talk to her yourself. And you'll Thank hear, you. you'll, you'll hear um, a, a rather neutral Android voice come on and say, Hubris Acquisitions. Uh, yes, my name is Mike Campbell, and I need to speak to hubris is she available um, she is on a consultation at the moment um, if you leave a number I can perhaps have her contact you when she gets a moment is there a, a, a appointment I can make a time that slot you have available let me look um, uh, see I have one three days from now will that do what's our time frame we don't, we're trying to get this done quick. So I try to move them. I, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll take the time slot three days from now. But if you have any openings before then, three days from now is is much longer than I wanted to wait. Make me a diplomacy check. See if you're smooth. <laughs> oh. 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 No. She's like, oh, I, I, I will put you down for three days from now. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, that slot has been filled. You're going to have to wait until later. <laughs> no, not, not that bad. Okay. Thankfully, there's no such thing as a critical failure on a skill check. Um, but now the, the receptionist seems rather um, cold and indifferent. So if, if, you, if you want to get in touch with her, you will have to find another, another tag. Or maybe ah. figure out how to get past this receptionist onto that elevator. <laughs> okay. I will um, do a couple things. One is, um, I'll hang on to the phone a little bit longer so I can look around and, and survey the situation here. Um, the elevator, or is there stairs and an elevator? Um, let's see, make me another perception roll. There are certainly a set of stairs, but they, um, look like fire exit only, and it doesn't look like they open from this side. Well, I wasn't smooth enough to be, uh, smart so i'm i'm gonna um just hang up and i'm gonna start talking to this human receptionist and uh i'm gonna ask her her name what's your name she'll say her name is kari and let's see you're a very charismatic guy and so yeah she's digging it Car, you want to go for a bike ride? Well, um, I'm I really um, I can't right now. I'm at work. When's your break? About forty minutes. How about I take you for a ride? Go get some lunch or uh, an ice cream or something. Ooh, that sounds like fun. All right, I'm going to make friends with Kari and see if that helps me get somewhere. Make me another diplomacy check. You can't tank them all. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, she is digging on you. In fact, to the point where, you know, you could probably get her to do things for you at this point. Ooh. So, a couple things I'll you know, ask for her number and that kind of thing. But um, when we're back from the date, when I'm dropping her off, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go up and talk to the receptionist in person. Is that okay with you? Sure. And she'll let you through. All right, we'll come back to you. Let's go to Geigo. And um, Geigo, what were you going to do? We're going to contact animal control about the, ba about the baby thing we got locked up. I'm pretty sure there's an animal control uh, place make, here. Make me a, a, a computer's check. Oh, basic success. The closest you can find um, in the downside is um, a um, division of, um, you know, the station maintenance called vermin control. I'll and call them. mostly about extermination. If you need something killed, they can do it. Does anyone here want this thing as a pet? It's too dangerous to let run around, so does anyone need it as a pet? Actually, they're not all that dangerous. I mean, most of the time, they don't actually kill the people they attach to, unless you get a whole bunch of them attached to you. Uh, does anyone want this thing as a pet? I don't want it as a growth. <laughs> no, it, it would be like, basically, um... Having a baby piranha as a pet, it wouldn't be very cuddly. Can you just let it go? I guess so. Yeah, I was worried about what it, I was worried about it eating someone else. It Rob says it's, Rob said it, it's unlikely that it would kill anybody. You, you would know for a fact that there are far more dangerous predators on this station than this. Okay, I'll let it go. Hell, I'll there are it. goblins on this station. They are more dangerous than this. In the meantime, I'm going to check. I'm going to check the computer. I'm going to check the computer that had their masters on it and see if 
and see if he left any traces of where he took it or if, it, or if like when he erased the files or what he did if there's any trace of the old files left give me another computers check oh oh awesome wow yeah this is the night um, of the 20s you can see um where you know the master uh, the master drive that the files were on how it had been removed um however you come across um some other files that were you know not so much files as extensions that look like they support or run another program that would be unrelated to the music files like perhaps these music files had something else in them other than just the music hmm. the code you got a natural 20 um you find traces of vesk military intelligence code on the computer say what Oh, someone's smuggling some real stuff in here. Great. I'll let the other two know that there's something to do with Vesk military intelligence in here on this computer. There's software from that. All right. Um, Rosk, are you there with him while he's doing this, or did you have something else you want to do? No, I'm probably going to go with him. All right, so you guys are back at the container with the van. Um, but, yeah, it appears that um, there, are, there were traces of some other sort of... Um, so it looks like it could be security software or encryption software of some sort. Hmm. Whatever it was, somebody tried their best to mostly wipe it out. But you got a natural 20, so you found traces. Okay. Okay. So while you and Rosk are, are doing this, um, Prad, what would you like to be doing? Um... I'm going to go take stock of ammo, go down to the local market, pick up anything else that I might need. And then right. probably and then probably head back. Actually, I'm probably going to after I do that, I'm probably going to head out to the spaceport and see if I can uh, circulate a description of this guy see if we can help find him. So you're um you're basically doing a canvas to try to find him. Yeah. Probably not a bad idea. Let's see. Let's have. Uh, I mean, looking at your um, skills here to see which one might apply best. Um... Give me these three skill checks. A sense motive and intimidation and a diplomacy as you go shake down the streets all right you've managed to find a couple of people that know thinky sly and none of them trust him but none of them have seen him in a while and most of them at least suspect that he is off station and has been for a long time um he had a falling out with um a corporate entity that you know your information doesn't define and um he had to lay low for a while and um if he's back and He's probably going to be laying low because he's a marked rat. Hmm. I guess I'll return and report what I found. Okay. Um, so the three of you have a little bit of information. Um, Gaigo, what else would you like to do while you guys are here? We know it's fast military code. We know this. So, uh... I mean, always transporting dangerous animals for some reason. 
Do I know of any? Do I know of anybody that deals in dangerous animals on the island on the station? Plaz. I mean, um, let's see. I don't think you do. I'm not. There is somebody on the. There is somebody on here. Um, yes. There, I know them. There is somebody here that specializes in animals, and yes, um, it appears that Prad knows somebody that fits that description. And she's a fucking bitch. I hate her. I'm not second that. She's your enemy. She's my enemy. Yes. What's her name? I can talk to her. Flaz. F L A Z Z. And she deals in what? She deals. She's a female patra merchant specializing. In live animals and plants as pets and food. You probably don't like her because um, you were at her shop one day and she was selling dried fairy wings or something that offended you. I don't know. You can come up with the backstory of why you guys don't like each other, but she doesn't like you either. Probably because I saw a... Uh, Abusing the animals. Anyways, um, do you guys want to go talk to her? I can go I mean, talk to her if you want to. She, she's I think Ego could. Yeah, there, <laughs> there. Although he sucks. She can usually be found in the. There's an open market, in in the downside, and they usually operate a stall. Her and her partner share, um. All, Oper is there operate a, adjacent stalls. Is there a printer in, in the in that little cargo bay? Um, no, there wouldn't be. I find some. Oh, I guess I can just show her display on my. I guess I can show her on display the um what the creatures looked like that they, that they were being shipped. See if she was see if she'd ordered any recently. What are you going to show her the skitter mander? Well, so and the what, and the big thing. Um, so you're going to go there and talk to them. Yeah, about exotic animals and uh, their market. You know. I'll go, but I'm going to hang out. Just hang out way back where I uh, can't be seen. I'm going to hang out with him. You, you you get to the market and you'll roll up on her and so say, Ah, young android. What can I do for you? I was told you were one to talk to about exotic animal purchases. I do deal in some exotic animals and plants. Um, are you looking for pet or a delicacy? Neither, actually. Someone was bringing them in, and there was some trouble. And we wanted to know. And I was wondering if they were your, if they were your, I mean, if they were something to assign. Is there something you were looking for on consignment? Well, that would all depend on what they are. I'll flash pictures of the whelps and the um big thing and she'll make a kind of a like yes i know i know the feeling like you do realize that as a sentient species and dealing in them is illegal ah okay i was not i was not aware they were kind of sentient because apparently the um and she will lean the in, other she will lean helping. in close and say i will give you 150 credits for it but a little, the big one's dead. You mean the little one? The little one, yes. That's the one. Is that the one you showed her the picture of? I was going to show her pictures of all of them, actually. Oh. Yeah, she knows what they are. And she just told you that the dealing in the whelps was illegal and then offered to buy it from you. <laughs> Can I do a perception check to see if she's she, if she actually wants to buy it? A sense motive? No, sense motive check, yes. All right, she does want to buy it, but that offer was a bit lowball. Kind of think with how hard they are to ship in, it's got to be harder. It's got to be, it's got to be a little worth a little more than that for the trouble these things are. And bear in mind that you are trafficking in an intelligent I know. species. It's a well, what is, what's, very what's, horrible <laughs> thing to be doing. <laughs> and more importantly, though, I was wondering if you had been in the market for them because someone brought them in for someone. No, I would not be in the market. There were, four, to, there were four 
And to be honest, if you were to sell it to me, I would free it. Well, we're trying to figure out what to do with it because it's still dangerous. But unfortunately, someone sick them. All, someone, someone brought all of those creatures on the station, and we don't know why. I would say let it loose. Perhaps it will thin the rat population. <laughs> More important. And she'll look around at some of the people passing by in the market, and kind of make a low kind of. You're not sure if it's a purr or a growl when she says it. There was this. Uh, we think. Um, uh, can I ask you if do you know do you know a person named Thinky? Th what was his name? It's Thinky Sly. No, no, the name does not sound familiar. Because we believe he's the one that brought the things on the station. We were wondering. Hmm. No. If this Thinky Sly. You said his name was. No. Black Ahsoka, pure uh, black. I do not know him, and um, I do not think I want to know him. I don't Tra think so either. Trafficking an intelligent species is a despicable thing. Very well. I will. And she will say, honestly, I will pay you $150, and you don't have to give it to me. You can just let it go. For 150, why not? I'll never say no to money. All right, add 150 credits to your character sheet. Um, she will say, of course. Um, would you like it? Would you like me to, hit, to give it to you first, or as proof? Do you have it with you? I probably got it in the box still. Yes, <laughs> yes. She would. She would. Um, she would definitely love to have it, and she will do exactly what she said. She's gonna let it loose. Okay, as long as her, it's on her. You know. pet, an pet animals are for pets food animals are for food this is an intelligent species it qualifies as yeah. neither I'm trying to figure out where cash goes on this character sheet um, inventory under no, inventory credits oh, yeah, oh there it is okay yes. yeah I got 150 to my name now alright so now you have gotten rid of the of the skittermander whelp. And now, now I need to figure out. You guys need to know what to do next. Um, let's come back around mm -hmm. to Mike Campbell. All right. You have schmoozed Kari, the receptionist, and she is going to let you through the turnstiles into the bank of elevators. Not like it was heavy duty security. It's turnstiles. You could have just, walked, just through, walk through walked through, walk and through. she wouldn't have been able to stop you, but you don't know what the security in this building is. If it's automated, it could be quite lethal. Right. I don't know who she might call, who she might <laughs> warn. And this way, I may have a date later. You just win, win. Might. All right. You get in the elevator, and you go up to floor three, and it opens into a, um, you know, a very nice but very – austere office it's you know got a black basalt you know receptionist desk and dark blue carpet and dark wood paneling and it is um very subdued lighting but there's no decorations you know things on the wall plants whatever and there's um an android a gender android standing behind the the receptionist table and he will say good day welcome to hubris acquisitions do you have an appointment i do have an appointment it's um it's not today so i'll wait and your name sir campbell mike campbell ah i see um and he will you know look up and he will say in approximately two hours and 40 minutes our business will close for the day you are welcome to wait until then but I cannot have you in here when we close oh sure I don't want to sleep here roll me a d12 
with lucky number seven. Just about then, the elevator dings again, and um, this older, um, well, you assume it's older, it's a, a Sheeran, um, will come off, to, come off the elevator and come up and say, good day, I have an appointment, and the Sheeran gives the name, and the receptionist, he will say, Ah, yes. Miss Hubris is expecting you. Please go right in. And the android will press a button and a piece of wall panel will slide aside and you can see another office inside and you can see the corner of a big fancy desk and the Sheeran will go shuffling into the office. Um, do, but do I, do I see Hubris at all? From where you are standing, no, you can see into the office, but you cannot see who you cannot see the whole desk or who might be sitting at it. Are there are you chairs in this tell us about your problem? Room? No, there are no chairs in this place. In fact, there's not a chair behind the desk either for the receptionist. He is standing. Because he's an android. Um, I uh, I asked the android behind the counter. I say, uh, how long is the Sharon's appointment? That is confidential information, sir. Um, oh, and the Sheeran, yeah. who is old and rather slow, is still kind of um, shuffling slowly towards that open door. Hint, 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 open door, hint. Okay, I will um, move over there and uh, maybe go in with him. All right. As, as he steps through the door... You follow him in right before the door shuts and he will turn and stop to look at you and you can see there's um you know an obviously female android, rather attractive for an android, sitting behind the desk wearing, you know, upscale business attire, and she looks at she's looking directly at you. And she will say, You are not my scheduled appointment, sir. Who well, are I'm, you? I'm, and I'm, how did you get in here? I am. I am certainly not uh, your scheduled appointment. Um, I have an appointment with you three days from now. Uh, but but I really can't wait. I need to to know today if you can help me. The Sharon will look at you and look at her and say, "Hubris, ours is only a social call." This gentleman seems to be in distress. Perhaps you should hear him out. And you can tell she is not happy. She's like, okay, fine. Tell me what you want. What's that rat's name? So I don't get it wrong. Thinky Sly. I want to mention the band because band, probably cause the one, she's the one that paid for that band to come here. Hmm. Um, we're doing some why work. Why do you think that? Well, for Uba Duba. That why do you? Th I'm asking. And not, and not, not not for the band to come here. I mean, she paid to watch the band after they arrived. So she, she did pay for something. Yes. All right. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yep. We're doing some work for Uba Duba, and we need to get in touch with Stinky Sly. Who is Uba Duba? They're this band that. Um, I actually thought you were a fan. Um, you might know their big hits of blah, 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 and uh, XYZ, and I don't know any of their names. Uh, yeah, you don't know any of the music. The only person that really recognizes the band is Herbie, and he's not here. Um, they, they're, they're uh, what, what race are they? Skittermanders. They're, they're, a, they're a Skittermander band, um, and, and they're the next pretty popular. Thing. Um, and and uh, Stinky Sly stole their master tapes. Okay, and, um, and what does this have to do with me? Uh, n nothing. I thought you could help me find Stinky Sly. I don't even know who this Stinky Sly is. How, how did you find my name? 
Uh, I was told that you were uh, performing surveillance over uh, the building where he was in. Oh, would that be um, Storage Bay 44? Uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. I was uh, I was hired to... Um, well, I won't go into um, details on it, but I can assure you that, um, you know, what I had going on it, it doesn't need to concern you. However, um, you appear to need to find this stinky sly. Yes, um, I know somebody that could probably help you out. Please do tell. Hold on, let me look this name up. Uh, she will say, um, you know, I can't disclose who my client is, but I will tell you that you are um, way out of your depth. And if I were you, I would not consider pursuing this line of inquiry. However, if you need to find this stinky sly, and she'll write down a name and push it across to you. This person, she seems to have a pulse on everything going on in the down below. And um, I'm going to look at your list of people to see who you know. Oh, you know the name. It's somebody you know. Robespierre, who is um, a female Isoki radio personality and an information broker. She's somebody you know, and I think she's actually a friend on somebody's list. I don't know. I'd have to go look. Yep. So I, I've bought information from her before. Yes. If anybody would know where to find this thinky sly, it would be her. She frequently... She she can frequently be found at Chrome Domes, and you guys know about Chrome Domes. It's one of the one of the more popular clubs in in you know the downside. Yeah. It's kind of an upscale kind of place. I thank you very much. This, this is exactly what I needed. I will get out of your hair, and and um, you can get back to your meeting with your friend. Indeed. Thank you for your time. And as I said, if you continue to pursue the line of questioning as to who my employers are, it won't end good for either of us. So I implore you, please don't. That won't be part of my investigation. And on the way out, I will cancel my appointment with the for the couple days from now. With, with her receptionist. All right. Let's see. But I'm going to say... I will confirm an appointment with um, Carrie. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Absolutely. So, yes. Definitely add Carrie to your um, list of known people. You can even add her, add her to the friends list as she is somebody that, um, you know, somebody you know. Add to the... And I will add her to my people list of um, NPCs which is ever growing. All right. Um, at this point, I will put you all back together at the um, Skittermander's um, little cargo hold area. What time do we have? It is 7.47. It is close to the end of the night, folks. And um, before we open the next chapter of this, I think tonight, this is a good place to call it for the night. Um, and we will pick up in two weeks. Hopefully I'll find out what happened to Joe. He had a power failure and an internet failure earlier. He might still be out. Um, meanwhile, I thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, this Wednesday nights are the highlight of my week. You guys are always a lot of fun. And um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. 
now. Thank you for hosting. Let's Thank you. let's take a look and see who's out there. Maybe we can um, throw a little raid on somebody. Maybe. Looks like um, DM Quicksilver is doing some Pathfinder, or he was. Did he just go off? Nope, he's still there. So we're going to send a raid to him. Pinky Slay. Is it pinky, not not uh, stinky? It's no, it's think thinky. thinky. It's, on the, it's on the screen there. Yes, it's thinky. Oh. And all right. Well, I thank everybody for coming out tonight. Thanks for all the new follows. Thanks for the biddies and thanks for the fun. When you get to Quick's channel, tell him DM Jingo sent you. And let's see. We will click that. And the countdown begins. Yay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Everybody say good night, Twitch. Good night, Twitch. Good night, Twitch. Good night, Twitch.